My first technique was the history of the game and console. For my fourth instalment, I looked at Hyman's Journal of Games Criticism in order to explain retro gaming and the loyal audience fan base that is observed through the game's history. I linked this to Aikiyama's social simulation model that looks into short and long-term memory and how this impacts gameplay and the user's experience. Through using this technique, I looked at Rassen's multiple analytical framework and how it considers techniques of participation and types, stating, Computer games and other digital technologies such as mobile phones and the internet seem to stimulate playful goals and to facilitate the construction of playful identities. His framework ontology describes culture as a site where meaning is generated and experienced through social realities that are constructed, experienced and interpreted through a term known as productive play, enabling cultural connectivity through fandoms. This is known as participatory media culture, which ties into the ideology that gaming is a bigger concept than what is inside the game. It flows into the user's interpretation and meaning of the narrative. This is a massive element in the game's multimediality and why there has been a history of the games developed in this franchise. Since 2001, the game has grown a super loyal fan base, adapting their games to new user experiences. This is done through player interpretation and virtuality. So my second technique is characters and dialogue. My third DA blog uh, gives an analysis of the different goals in the different games, reflecting the emerging modality and spatiality of our culture via fostering problem-solving skills and educating players. An article by Hyman suggests that the studying of rhetoric collective memory can teach us not only about what specific aspects of history are being remembered and why, but also about how a culture communicates with one another, thus fostering another element of social simulation games. This reflects real life interactions. As outlined in the gameplay design patterns for game dialogues article, it is stated that characters are the core of game activity and perform actions that provoke more actions based on feedback from the player. This then establishes a natural model for communication between player and characters, mixing concept tools in reference to gameplay, dialogue and gameplay patterns. Gameplay can be established through computational linguistics from game developers and designers. By listening and understanding the character's wants and needs, it gives the gamer a task and promotes the reinforcement of positive feedback and player impact, fostering skills related to emotional validation critical thinking, and problem solving. Player dialogue gives the game a focus, desire, and a reason to continually build on gameplay elements. Now let's look at overall gameplay as my third technique. As stated in the theory of flow and psychology, and in blog post three of my DA, I observed the flow of positive experiences in each game, which includes players completing objects such as following rules, involvement with the storyline and characters, concentration, and looping players in a circle of positive reinforcement. This is a blueprint method for social simulation games and overall experience, along with nostalgia and palea play. As stated by Hyman, quote, one hook is the power of memory and nostalgia. Returning to or referencing classic games or stories can be a strong attractor. Proving that game theory mixed with past game nostalgia has been an effective tool in game sales, consumer demand, and Nintendo's overall reputation. Nostalgia reflects spatiality in gameplay, reflecting on the environment players use to immerse themselves in a game. Using nostalgia in reference to spatiality gives audiences a sense of being literally present in the game's narrative. For example, if you played the first Animal Crossing in 2001, and again in 2020, you'd presumably have a sense of nostalgia induced by game spatiality from 2001. You'd see characters that you met in previous games in new ones, along with other game elements too, thus impacting your current experience and enhancing its effects. When players are active in their play, literally, their awareness and consciousness in encompassing themselves in their surroundings are beneficial in exuberating the Padia effect of play, highlighting game modality. It's also noted that when one understands game mechanisms, 
people can enhance spatial skills, giving insight into sensory, perceptual and attentional abilities, which are important skills in spatial cognition.